Okay, we're ready to go now. Roland's just come on the call, so let's get straight into it. Hey, Roland. That's great. Yes, thanks, Kim. Welcome to everybody on the Small Business Masterminds online um, webinar about the purpose of your business and why you should care. Just a, a, a general comment before we go on. Um, it's been proven time and time again that passively sitting and listening to someone talking means that you'll forget 90% of what you've heard in less than a week. So if you want to get as much return on your investment of time in being part of this workshop, you need to participate. And that means that you need to do the exercises that we uh, that we've given you in the in the worksheet, um, and follow the follow the follow the whole process through the worksheet and actually fill in the blanks and do that stuff. Ask questions, um, put up your hand, type in the little window on the right, the chat window on the right um, that you should that should be up on your screen at the moment, and we'll try and interface with those as much as possible. So, listen. Ask questions, fill in the worksheet, and <clears throat> especially if you're going to get distracted by Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, <laughs> email, text messages, <laughs> Pinterest, whatever is uh, is the latest, turn it all off. You you cannot you cannot think that you're going to be focused on all that stuff and get value from uh, from being on this uh, workshop, this uh, webinar at the same time. It just simply won't happen. Not even for women, multitasking is actually a myth. Believe me. So, uh, let's in to quickly introduce ourselves. Kim, who are you? Who am I? Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Kim Heffern, and for those who don't who you don't, don't don't know me, I'm a marketing consultant with many years uh, management, sales, and marketing experience across both large and actually small business as well. I'm also working with Roland as an associate of New Perspective, but alongside that, I run my own company called the Marketing Strategy Company. We actually provide online, offline, social media marketing, and contract marketing services for small business to make the strategy happen. But one of the things that really appeals me about today's webinar, I actually believe a business needs to have a very clear purpose and a so-called brand story that engages their prospects and customers. So I'm actually going to love sharing this webinar with you today to help you get on the track to uncovering your business purpose. Because what I believe and I've actually found is that when you get your purpose clear, it actually makes your marketing and sales so much easier and actually so much more effective as well. Mm, mm, yeah, absolutely. And so um, I'm Ronald Hennigrick, I'm the smiling character on the right, and I'm a business coach and I help small business owners out of, out of being overwhelmed on a day-to-day -day basis and having more fun in their business and when they get to do that, they get to build a business that sustains them for years to come. So if you want your business to be more fun, um, then this is the place to be because because when your business is fun, it means that everything is working. It means that you're making money. It means that your staff is engaged. It means that your customers are raving fans and dragging their friends and family into your business to come and do business with you. It means that you're proud of the stuff you do, and it means that you've got found a certain level of balance in your life. And so I'm also the author of, uh, of a series of business books for small business owners, and they're called Potentials for Business Owners series. And the second book in that series. The tenter is for building a great growth company as the foundation of the small business masterminds, webinars, and workshop. And so both of us are based here in Sydney. So how about I, I just run through what today is all about? Well, today's mastermind webinar is about helping you uncover your purpose, as we call it, the purpose of your business and why you should actually care about that purpose. And that's purpose with a capital P. The business truth this webinar is all about is the business that sustains you for years to come, so not just any business, one that sustains you for years to come, has a purpose for existing far beyond just the standard maximising shareholder value. Hmm. So how about we share what we want our business owners to take out of today's webinar, Roland? Yeah. So what we want to achieve on the webinar today is uh, for you is quite simple and twofold. We want you to all walk away enthusiastically and with at least one simple step that you are committed to taking to get one step closer to absolute clarity about the purpose of your business and how to engage everybody affected by the business in that purpose. And secondly, we want you to all become really present to how important it is to, to not only be great at what you do, but also to be great at running a business. Because a lot of business owners are great tradies, professionals, corporate SKPs, you know, subject matter experts. But 
they've never been trained in how to run a business. To be a great small business owner, you have to be all over a whole heap of key aspects of managing and growing your business, not just uh, you know the purpose. So um, <clears throat> yeah, look, you, you, you uh, did right, Rob. Dead right. Look, we, we know from our own experience and from working with clients that even when you've gained this clarity about the purpose, there's still a whole lot of other areas. And you'll see someone up on the screen now from you know vision, planning, getting numbers in the business, making sure there's money coming in, looking after customers, uh, helping manage and inspire people, creating innovation, leadership, and getting your target market right, just to name a few. Um, so what we want to do is a little later on the webinar, we'll tell you how purpose fits into that overall picture. I guess we've got that image there of COGS because they all actually need to work together uh, in terms of doing mm. it. So we'll talk a little bit later about that as well. Um, just while we're on the subject, has anyone got any questions about any of this? And, and actually, that's a good reminder for that. On page two of your worksheets, which you should have printed out in front of you, you'll see a section there that says what your outcome for participating in the webinar is. To get really good involved in this webinar, make sure you fill out the worksheet. So just take a moment um, while Roland's checking in in the next minute or so to write down what your outcome is for today's webinar. Um, Roland, let's go through the agenda, hey? Yeah. So what, we gonna, what we're going to go through today is uh, to check in where you are um, in relation to the purpose of business yourself. And we're going to check in, uh, talk about why it's so important to have absolute clarity about the purpose of your business. We're going to talk about why the purpose of your business is not actually about making a lot of money. Uh, we're going to talk about the three principles, the, pre, the three principles of the purpose of a business, or of establishing the purpose of a business. We're going to give you some further examples of the three key principles in real life. We're going to go give you some tools to help you get clear about the, the, the purpose of your business. I'm going to read you a business bedtime story um, and send you all to sleep. No, not really. And we're, <laughs> we're, going, to, we're going to help you take take action, take 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 action steps because it's all about action in the end. What about that, Kim? It sounds pretty good, but no time for napping, Roland, because we've got a lot we're going to get get through. So how about we yes. get stuck into it? But as a start, you know, one of the things we like to do uh, on our mastermind webinars is get people connected with where they are regarding the topic. So we're just going to run a little quick poll on where you guys are in terms of the purpose of your business. Well, I might just get you to, uh, how about you run through the questions, yep. eh? Yep. So the three questions that, we, uh, that, that we've that we got for you, and so we'd like you to select one of them, is uh, A, you're, um, you're, you're feeling frustrated because all you seem to be able to do is compete on price, and it seems like your customers have no other interest in your business than being the cheapest. Or B, you're confused because you don't understand because you thought that making profit would be the most important reason for my business to exist. Or C, you're excited because uh, you're, you absolutely know what, the business, what, the, what your business exists for and, and, and your customers and your staff are just as excited about that as you are. So fill it in now. And on your worksheet, the same uh, three options are on your worksheet, so I, I suggest you tick it on there as well. Okay, everyone's uh, filled in the poll. We've got 100% participation. I wish all the my customer surveys were like that, Roland, I've got to say. So yeah. <laughs> people are really engaged with the topic. So what are the numbers? Okay. Um, first of all, those people feel frustrated because they're only competing on price. 63, so let's round that down to 60%. Um, 32 are confused, don't understand. So let's round that down to 30%. And around 10% are excited because they know, wow, 60% are frustrated because all they're doing is competing on price. 32% are confused and 10% excited. Is that is that sort of what you'd expect? It's what I'd expect. I guess is that what you'd expect as well? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Most small business owners and probably big business owners as well, um, or prospective business owners, don't get, get that their business has a much deeper reason to exist than just making money. And they don't get how to uncover that and how to communicate. But but what what does that create a problem? It creates a problem, obviously. So what is that problem? Well, the big problem is this, uh, Kim, that if you don't care about the purpose of your business, your customers certainly won't mm. either. And then all that's left is to compete on price. Mm. And and competing on price is a dog's game. Yep. And hence the purpose of this call. How can we go about uncovering the purpose of our business? 
And so what we want to do in this webinar is to give you some of the basic bits of understanding and direct you to a few simple tools that you'll find really helpful in, uh, in building your, your sustainable business. Hmm. And we want to suggest some simple steps for you to take straight away. Yeah, so why don't we actually jump straight into those three key principles that we're going to focus on that we yeah. actually believe so strongly in? Yeah. So the three principles are the purpose of business. First is competing on price is not a strategy for sustainable success with your business. Second is that in order to avoid having to compete on price, you need to be clear about the purpose of your business. And third, the purpose of your business must relate to your customers' needs. Yeah, okay, excellent. That's good principles. But as you know, Roland, I'm a, I'm a very practical guy. How about we dive in deeper and explain what those principles actually actually mean? Yeah. So the first thing to understand is that we say that the purpose of business is not making lots of money. Uh, and I know there's lots of people that say it is, though, but, but why not? So what's wrong with making lots of money? And there's absolutely nothing wrong with making lots of money. Indeed. It's a lot of fun to make a lot of money. Yeah, absolutely. I, a lot of people will say, and I guess to be honest with you, until I'd actually started working with you, I actually really thought that was the, you know, the principle of business as well because that's what you taught. It's all about maximizing yeah, shareholder value. Yeah. yeah. I know. That's one of my most hated terms. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, meeting where was, I was in, in, a, in a meeting this morning where somebody uh, mentioned it and I had to cringe. Yeah. <laughs> there's absolutely, no, uh, there isn't anything wrong with making money. That's not what, 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 what we're trying to say at all. It's a lot of fun to make lots of money, and what's more, a business cannot develop and it cannot grow if it doesn't make a healthy profit yeah. year in, year out. But it can't be why your business exists. It cannot be its reason for two principal reasons. There's more, but the two principal ones are this. First of all, it doesn't differentiate you from anyone else, because everybody wants to do that. And second, your customers actually don't care about your need to make money. It is exactly what the problem is with the money focus, especially especially for small business too. Mm, 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 yeah, yeah. It, <clears throat> there's um, there's a wonderful book um, I wrote recently, and the, 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 uh, one of the authors of that uh, of that book, the, the covers up on the screen, is a guy called John, John Mackey, and he mm. founded a, um, a business in America called Whole Foods Market, and it's a six billion dollar grocery retail company. Uh, in the in the states, and uh, and John Mackey's uh, also become a best-selling author, and he says this: thinking that your business exists to make profit is like thinking that human beings exist to make to eat food. Mm. See, you and I, we all all of us, we need to eat food, and we enjoy eating food, and and good foods better than uh, than bad food, uh, <clears throat> but but it's not why we exist. We don't. Ex we, we're not on this planet to eat. We need to eat, but we need to eat food to make good on our purpose in life, our personal purposes in life. And that's exactly like that in business. Your business needs profit and it needs cash. And it needs a fair bit of it as well. But the primary reason it needs this profit is to allow it to fulfill on its true purpose. Um, we're giving you a link uh, in, the, in the resources at the end, in the resources page, there's a link to this book. So if you want to encourage your customers to do business with you, it makes it so much easier if you give them a reason, a really good reason, besides that you are the cheapest. Everyone else competes on price and there'll always be someone cheaper, so you can't differentiate yourself, differentiate yourself from the competition, from, from all your competition. But if you give people a deep purpose of your business to believe in, people will want to be your customers. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love the analogy you have with the eating. It's a great analogy that um, mm. you know, we don't just exist to eat. So when you relate that to business, it makes perfect sense to me. I tell you what, the other one I really love is Simon Sinek's take on that as well, to start with why. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's really cool. Um, yeah, he's a, it's a Simon Sinek, Sinek, I don't know how to pronounce it, but um, no, another American. They're all American, aren't they? Anyway, so, um, <laughs> But yeah, a, um, uh, I first came across, across him in a, in a TED talk, um, he did a phenomenal TED talk, um, he's an online business and marketing guru, and so he wrote a book called it's, uh, Start With Why, and, and his refrain in the video and in the book as well is that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. 
In other words, your customers want you to explain to them why your business exists, what it's on this earth for, and why they should care. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, the problem that I find, I know you do as well, Roland, but when you ask most small business owners what the purpose of the business is, they generally give me, I guess, one or maybe some of all of three pretty similar answers. We do great work. We're the best at what we do, but we do it at a great price and we have great customer service. Yeah, yeah, yeah it just makes me shudder. <laughs> well, let's jump in and explain why we believe there's a problem with having one of those three reasons as yeah, the purpose of your business, basically. Yeah, well, look, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, um, there's a few few reasons, but the two big ones I, I see is that your customers, your customers are always going to expect those three things mm. as a minimum mm. um, because, you know, <laughs> Um, they're not going to be looking for a. They're not going to be looking for a business that does average work at an average price <laughs> with average service. You know, no, no customer has ever set out to go. Let's look for someone that does average work, average price, and an average service. That doesn't happen. So, everybody, every customer, every customer is going to be looking for someone who does great work at a great price and that gives great service. And all your esteemed cust- uh, competitors by the way, are obviously going to say the same thing. If I talk to any of your customers, uh, competitors, they're going to say they do great work for a great price and they give great service. So as a consequence, the only thing then that's left to differentiate on is price. Yeah. And I promise you, building a healthy, small business, a business that's a sustainable, uh, healthy business, um, based on being the cheapest, that's a long, hard slug to nowhere. Yes, it sure is. But yeah, this is not just Siri as well, because yeah, you know, the people we work with have some really great examples of businesses. If uncovered, it live and actually have amazing customer and staff connections, and mm. really connect with this deeper purpose. We're going to share some of those now, aren't we? I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, here's a couple of clients of mine and others that I've come across. Um, just to give you an idea, so there's a there's an architect I've worked with, um, and um, he established the purpose of his business to be architecture that inspires. So meaning that everything that comes out of their uh, comes out of his office, everything they do, everything they touch is going to be inspirational at some level. It could be a toilet, but it's still uh, something inspirational about. It. There's a furniture factory um, that uh, that I used to. Um, it's not a client of mine, but I, 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 I did business with them in the past. And they stated that they made the most beautiful tables mm. in the world. There's a great example for Microsoft as well. Um, I think it's changed now, but um, in, the, in the 90s and, uh, and 2000s, um, their purpose for being was to put a computer on every desk running Windows. Mm. And they more or less achieved the two. Um, <clears throat> at that time, until... Uh, Apple to go for um, the, an electrical contracting business, an electrician that I've worked with a lot. Um, he made the purpose of his business to say, you're, you're in safe hands. So if, mm. if everything they did is all about, and, and their belief is all about being safe. Mm. And, and new perspectives, uh, the, 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 the new perspectives purpose is to help as many small business owners in the world as possible out of a state of overwhelm back into a state of having fun in business. So um, let me give you a little um, uh, bit more background about the second one, that's uh, the the furniture factory. Um, This this is a purpose statement of a furniture factory in the inner city of Sydney in Australia. The business doesn't exist anymore now because the owner made enough money to sell all his stock and close the business and buy a boat and be selling around the world for the rest of his life. So purpose can make Uh, money as well. (laughs) Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's probably the most efficient way to make money. Yeah, it's right. As long as you don't, as as you don't start with it. So <laughs> I often, so I used to drive past this showroom um, in the suburb of Glebe, actually, and um, and the statement of the windows caught my eyes every time I went past. And the statement to make the most beautiful tables in the world drove all decisions and processes in the business. Because if you if you set out to make the most beautiful tables in the world. If you if you if you say this is what we're doing, come hell or high water, then so many things suddenly become really clear. Because suddenly there's no question about pricing anymore. Because the most beautiful tables in the world would never be the cheapest tables; it just wouldn't work with each other, right? Um, there's no question about how to how you find staff. 
to make the most beautiful tables in the world, you have to have really well paid and highly skilled staff. And there can never be a question about the material that's selected when you go to the timber yard to buy timber to make these tables, assuming that they're timber tables. There can never be a question about whether you buy this piece of timber or that piece of timber, because there's only one piece of timber that's going to help you make the, the, the most beautiful table in the world. And, and it's the same for everything. All the decisions and actions in the business, marketing decisions, suddenly become so much easier, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, look, absolutely, Ron. It cuts across the whole business. But you know, that's why I said at the top, from a marketing viewpoint, I love helping business owners get this right because it does make it so mm. much easier. Mm. And, um, you know, nailing your colours to the mast with this clarity takes guts, but it also makes mm. life so much simpler. And from a marketing perspective, it yeah. really becomes easy to start conversations with potential customers. And if you were in the market for a table, you know, if you were in the market for a table for your newly renovated home, would you want to at least go and have a look at the most beautiful tables in the world? Yeah, of course yeah. you would. Yeah, of course. I, I certainly yeah. did, and I know I send a number of friends and clients there over the years, and, and, and a number of them bought their tables too. Um, yeah. I, I often look at these guys like, you know, the most beautiful tables are in safe hands, but how do you actually go about creating or making the statement? You know, where does it come from? Because a lot of people struggle with this, don't they? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and um, it's an important distinction you need to understand. A purpose statement is not a goal. Mm. A purpose statement is a statement of striving. It's a statement that defines an intention. It's not actually a goal that can be achieved. You can only ever strive for it. You can ask yourself, this table that I'm making, that I'm designing, do I believe, do I believe that it's one of the most beautiful tables in the world or that it's going to be one of the most beautiful tables in the world? And if I can't personally answer that question clearly with a yes, then I don't make it and I don't sell it. Yeah. Now, other people, other people may decide that that table isn't the most beautiful table in the world because they may believe that the most beautiful table in the world has to be made from stainless steel and glass, for example, and right. your table might be made from timber. But they can't argue that you believe it is the most beautiful table in the world. It's all about your belief and your clarity, and that is what people want to hear about. And that's what Simon Sinek says when he means. That's what Simon Sinek means when he says people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Yeah, they connect with you. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, look, there's lots of other business gurus that have written about the deeper purpose, the purpose of business beyond making profit and all that sort of stuff. There's uh, people like Jim Collins and Jason Jennings, Roy Spence, many others. Uh, it's one of the most deeply documented business management concepts these days. The days of focusing on maximizing shareholder value as the primary purpose of business are numbered in D. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you know, surprisingly, at least you know, from one perspective, it also turns out, and you just mentioned it just before, that the most profitable businesses worldwide, the businesses that make the most money for their owners and shareholders, are actually the businesses that, that have absolute clarity on the deeper purpose of their business and how that relates to their client. Yeah, definitely. So why don't you just uh, keep on going with that, Ron? Explain that in a little more detail for us. Yeah, look... Um, because that's, that's the funny thing with uh, with uh, profit and um, and um, and um, and making profit, because it's the, 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 the interesting thing is that by not focusing on profit, you actually make more profit. It's almost the opposite of what we're taught to expect or believe to mm. be true. Um, uh, it's it's been proven time and time again by many people all around the world, and what's more, it's proven at small and big business level as well. And, you know, you and I have both worked with and seen a number yeah. of small businesses that have taken this thing to heart and have done and are, do, and are still doing exceedingly well, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So just keep going with that, Roland. And I, I, yeah. I think people want to hear a bit more about that. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so, I mean, I, I think the question that comes up a lot for, for people is, oh, you know, if this is so, so wonderful, I mean, um, and, and if this is established uh, established uh, business um, business theory these days, um, why do so many business owners and so many CEOs and so many boards and and so many shareholders still seem to focus on nothing else but shareholder value, maximising shareholder value as their prime motivator? And I think I think the main reason for that is that it's just so much easier to talk about money 
money is such a simple thing to focus on and measure. All you need to do is look at a single number and ask, so do I have more than I have yesterday? Mm. And, and yesterday, and it's and it's actually really hard to maintain a focus on something as tough as making the most beautiful tables in the world. Every day, there'll be temptations to compromise. It means having, because it constantly means having tough decisions, doing tough work and making tough decisions all the time. It actually takes really true courage to stick your neck out and say, from here forth, we only do architecture that inspires. That means that if a project or a client walks in the door and that isn't at some level inspiring, then we say no to it, even if we could have made lots of money from that project. Not because money isn't important, as you said before, money is critically important. The business can't develop unless it makes enough money, but paradoxically, if you make money your primary focus, you won't make very much of it at all. Money comes as a consequence on focusing really clearly on something else. Yeah, look, I mean, that's that's absolutely correct. It is scary when you say, look, this isn't, doesn't quite feel right, but I'll do it because I'm going to make money. And it really does actually take that courage. And I guess not many people are actually prepared to be truly courageous, are they? Mm, mm, yeah, well, look, <clears throat> look it's, it, it's, it's, it's not so much I think that people aren't courageous necessarily, is that they don't realise that they need to be correct. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, okay. Because I think people are just not having this discussion enough in business. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, it's obviously even more the case in small business. I mean, nobody has these discussions. I mean, yeah, there really probably is no one to discuss it with in a lot of cases as well. No, well um, yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah, there might be some MBA programs where the topic gets discussed, but you know, most small business owners don't do MBA programs before they start their business. No, not exactly. Yeah, no, very rare. So, <clears throat> so, 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 what happens is that we just keep regurgitating the old maxim, maxim, the old myth that business exists to grow and to make profit, and it's just mm. silly. Yeah. I don't even donate money to a charity because they need more money. I donate money to charity because I believe in what they believe in. Mm. So I certainly don't go and spend money with a business because I identify with them. <laughs> and make profit. I mean, that <laughs> I spend money with a, with a business because they offer something I want and because I trust them and because I get what they exist for and what drives them. And, <laughs> and then after they've satisfied my needs, if they happen to make a lot of money as well, I'm perfectly okay with that. <laughs> so I think it must be time for one of our best bedtime stories. It, it is certainly time for a bedtime story, I think, Roland. We've been waiting patiently, all cool up, pillow under the head, <laughs> waiting for the bedtime story. <laughs> okay. All right. The bedtime story, the business bedtime story. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, in a country not unlike Australia, John owned a corner shop in the inner city of Sydney. Now, running a corner shop in the inner city is hard. There are corner shops everywhere, and then there's the 7-Elevens, and there's the City Express stores, and, and there's Woolworths and Coles, and they'll get in on the act from time to time, and the hours are insane, profitability is minimal, and the competition is just crazy. And John often caught himself thinking, how can I escape this trap of deadly competition with my neighbour so we can all have a better life? So working with me as his business coach, John was a client, some years ago, John came to realise that the only way to escape the competition trap was to make the competition irrelevant. And the way to make the competition irrelevant is by making yourself truly unique, by creating something that is completely different from everything else out there. And so he did. John decided to become the best small supermarket in Sydney. And the day he made this decision, in literally everything changed. Sydney's got great corner stores, handy convenience stores, big coals and wool with sexy delis, groceries, but there's only one best small supermarket in Sydney. Now, two years later, John opened a second store. And I think we've got a photo of that second store actually up there as well. That's actually one of his stores. Um, and John opened the second store, and a year after that, he opened his third, and a year later, again, his fourth. And John's customers love him, and they love his stores, and profits are many times what they were three years ago. And John is actually creating something really special in the inner city of Sydney. And John and all his satisfied customers lived happily ever after. <laughs> Thank you for that, Ron. I'm still awake. You haven't put me to sleep with the bedtime story like you were worried about before. And it's actually a really great story. And John, 
not his real name, of course, is a really great guy. And actually, he, every time you speak to him, he actually lives it, doesn't he? He doesn't just talk about his business. Oh, yeah. He really does live it, doesn't it? And I, I guess I'd like yeah, to ask, yeah, yeah. yeah, listening to that story, what actually came up for people? Um, we'd like to just check in with you now and hear what's come up for you so far. So just in the little chat window there, if you can just type in what your top takeaway, just one thing you picked up from that bedtime story or even just a little observation um, on the webinar so far. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, and so, you know, type those questions straight into the chat window and um, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll try and answer them. Yeah. Okay, I've got one here. Roland, how about we answer this one? So from John, John in Melbourne. Okay. So John says, mm -hmm. I've gone... John says, what did he say? I've gone... I've thought about this before, but I find it really hard to get. Oh, okay. I thought about it before, but I find it really hard to get beyond good price, good quality, and good service. And he's actually not quite sure how to go about finding something else. So he's stuck on what we talked about before. Hmm. Uh, excellent question, John. Um, I'm glad you asked it because I'm, I'm sure many of you have that question in mind. And rest assured, we'll help you find the easiest steps to uncover your purpose before we finish up. So we'll get back to you. Uh, Absolutely. Here's actually oh, a lovely comment, actually, from Wendy in Sydney. Uh, a light went on for her. I suddenly realised that having, I uh, suddenly realised having a clear and deep purpose of her business means she's so much easier to know what to say no to. That's really good, isn't it? Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that's a perfect, uh, perfect comment because. I wanted to talk about that uh, earlier on. You know, because one of the most important reasons to be clear about the purpose of your business is so you know what to focus on and what not to focus on. And so saying no is actually one of the most important skills to develop as a business owner. But without a clear and deep purpose, you don't know what to say yes to and what, more importantly, you don't know what to say no to. Yeah, absolutely. And then you can lose focus pretty easily uh, with that, can't you? And yeah, yeah, go down yeah, the wrong yeah, path, yeah. if you want to call it that. Um, here's another one yeah. from... Uh, Oh, hi, David. Hey, David, how are you going? Um, he says, I've had an IT business. I know David pretty well. And he's always focused on profit, but <laughs> I'm not surprised the IT guy is saying this. Uh, what's actually wrong with that? Yeah. Uh, look, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. If it works for you, all power to you. Honestly, if your business is performing how you want it to and you're having as much fun in business as you want to have and your business sustains you, great stuff. More power to you right now. But... And, I suppose all we're saying is that for most businesses and most business owners, it's much, much more effective in the long run and much more fun, especially, to focus on something else, something bigger and deeper, first and foremost. But if it works for you, like I said, all power to you. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I mean, it comes down to horses for courses, I guess. But if it passes that fun test, um, I think you're absolutely right. We had a couple more, Roland, but yeah. we might just uh, move on because I think yeah. What's sort of coming through there? I guess we need to give people some assistance in learning how to uncover that purpose. And and by the yeah. way, we use the term uncover rather than create. Is that on purpose, Roland? I think it might be, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it's not an excellent. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it's uh, because I believe that the deeper purpose of your business always actually already exists, but you just haven't become conscious of it. And you certainly haven't verbalized it for yourself, but especially not to others. So the process we want to encourage you to go through instead of uncovering rather than creating. Yeah, look, it sounds like it's a big discussion also, but I think we actually better leave that one alone for now. Probably better suit the philosophy course, I guess, in some ways, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, could be. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can navel steer with the best of them. So, look, <laughs> here, are, here are the seven questions. The seven questions that will help you get clear about the purpose of your business. And I think, let me just check. I think those questions are also repeated. In your yeah, they're in the workbook there. I think Roland as well. On page five. On page five. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the questions are. Um, what are my five most important personal values, personal values, as they relate to business? What the second question is: What core personal beliefs do I hold about my business and about my industry? Third one is: What do I get really excited about in business? What do I get out of bed for? What am I passionate about? What really, you know, really thrills you in business? The fourth question is, 
What do I want my business to be the best in the world at? Fifth one is who are my ideal customers? The sixth one is so what do my ideal customers need or want that they're not at present getting from someone? So what is, the, what is their big need, their pain, if you will? And seventh, the last question is, how can I address all those six previous questions above and develop a long-term, sustainable, profitable business model around that? Yeah, absolutely. So I guess what we're saying is the combination of your own personal beliefs and, and the customers. So you know, by asking those questions and answering them, you actually help uncover the purpose of the business. Yeah, absolutely. Because <clears throat> those are the questions that you need to answer. They're not they're not easy answers, uh, easy uh, easy questions. Though I mean, they're, 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 you don't just sort of. Uh, I can't imagine that you would just quickly uh, write up the answers to all those questions down off the top of your head. It takes time. Uh, <clears throat> that takes some soul searching and 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 brainstorming and digging around with others around it. But that's how you get to the bottom of it. Yeah, they're not what I call tick and flick, like yeah, completely no. a little quick questionnaire, are they? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, I would, I would take the process of weeks to. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, when I go through this process with clients, it could take weeks. Yeah, I mean, just uh, just recognise that's months. important. It's it's a it's a journey, as you said before. It's not a uh, yeah. You know, it's yeah, you know, where you're heading is the most important thing. Um, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. And I think just for people just to be make sure on the worksheet that's part of that webinar, it's got those questions on them as well as some space to write in some thoughts on the answer just to get you going as well. Um, there's also another worksheet on the resources page as well um, and that usually accompanies a number of the seven questions, especially the personal values, beliefs and passions part of the questions as well because that's where you start. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So I would really suggest that you um, that you download that uh, that worksheet. It's called the Passion and Purpose Worksheet, and it's on the landing page. and um, And so go through that by yourself first before you work through the, the the all of the seven questions in one go. And so we'll talk about that a little bit more at the end of the webinar. Yeah, look, remember we talked at the beginning um, about purpose as well, and where purpose fits into the overall picture. Um, because when, when you've got that you know, clarity of purpose, there's a whole lot of other areas. You know, we talked about identifying the target market, creating a business plan. You've got to create a great customer experience too that gets repeat or referral business, making sure you're generating cash, um, developing you know, systems and processes, making sales, developing as a leader. And I guess that's why Roland calls these you know, the 10 truths in his, in his books. Uh, in terms of doing it. But the problem is, it actually seems so overwhelming that people don't know where to start. So what we actually would like to do is help people get started on that, but at the same time, actually help a really worthwhile charity as well. Yeah. So, because if you want to build a business that sustains you for years to come, you have to, you know, you have to le learn to deal effectively with all those areas and you have to juggle all those aspects of your business. So that's we're making this uh, this offer to you as mastermind attendees to take the next step to building a business that truly sustains you for years to come, and in the process you'll be supporting the Wayside Chapel as well. And we'll talk about that in a, in a moment. So, um, so we've got a special offer, a special offer for you. We'd like to support you to take the next step in developing your business. So to, to that end, this is what we propose. So, so no, one. so That's number it. one. Number one, mm -hmm. make a donation to the Wayside Chapel of $100, or actually more if you like. It doesn't have to be limited to $100. Mm -hmm. Look, if you're not familiar with Wayside, because you may be outside Sydney, I do fantastic work with those who are really struggling. Then when you actually do that, um, we'll send you our new Perspectives Business Checkup that covers most of the key areas we discussed. And then one of us, Ed Roland or I, will schedule a 45-minute Clarity and Next Steps coaching session via Skype to review the results help draw out some simple steps in the most critical areas because that health check we talked about covers all those areas in the cog that we talked about and then you can work out where you should focus on first for your business as well. Um, so I think that takes away the overwhelm, doesn't it, Roland? That's what we want to try and help people do. Yeah, it's, um, it's, 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 a, it's a really powerful step to cut through the clutter and, um, and, and, and focus on what's most important next and that's that's the most effective way to get out of over overwhelm is to be able to cut through the clutter. So, um, so we take away overwhelm and you get some, 
you get some enthusiasm and fun back into the business. And the outcome of um, <clears throat> of the of this this uh, this session that we offer you is that you get some really great clarity about the most appropriate next steps um, for you and and for you and your business. Absolutely. So, Roland, I think it's probably a good time to sum up everything we talked about so far on the webinar. Just go through, I guess, a little bit of revision. Yeah. So, we first talked about how competing on price is not a strategy for sustainable success in your business. The second thing we talked about um, I think again there is. Um, uh, oh no, it's not a new worksheet. Sorry. Um, so the first, uh, the first we talked about the competing on price is not a strategy for sustainable sort of success. The second thing we talked about is that in order to avoid having to compete on price, you need to be clear about the purpose of your business. And the third principle um, of uncovering the purpose of your business is that the purpose of your business has to relate. To your customers' needs. Absolutely. Then we talked about. Mm, then we talked about how making lots of money can't be the abiding purpose of your business because it doesn't help to differentiate you because your customers don't care and because there are more important things to achieve in life. We talked about how doing great work for a great price with great customer service doesn't cut as a, cut it as a statement of purpose because everybody else says that. We went through a number of examples and we explained why it takes courage to decide on the purpose of your business. And then, of course, we told you about John and Best's small supermarket in Sydney. And finally, we've given you seven questions to focus on to help you get clear on the purpose of your business. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, both Ron and I are passionate about helping small business, but I think we're even more passionate about not just listening to stuff and taking action on it. Um, so we want to help you get into action. So we've created a special uh, Small Business Mastermind Purposes resource page for all of you on our webinar today. There are lots of resources on there that you can use to watch and download and get started on. Um, I think the link... Uh, for that, I'll put it in the uh, in the follow up email. So you've actually got that link, but it's yeah. tiny.cc. So uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, it's tiny.cc forward slash purpose L page. But there's a, um, uh, a link to that also in your worksheet. Um, yeah, uh, exactly. Well. And, and we'll email it out. So um, uh, I might even put it in the chat window now for those of you. Who That'd are, be great. So, so uh, while Roland's doing that, right while Roland's doing that, um, you already have your worksheets and there's plenty of room for taking notes and for starting the process of uncovering your purpose. So um, there's another copy of those there as well on the on the resources page if you want it as well. So just make sure that you actually do take the next step. Um, I would actually suggest give yourself 10 minutes sometime today to actually take that first step in terms of doing yeah. it. And just make sure you go through your notes again and go through the blanks. And by all means, um, you know, watch the recording of this. This will also be on the resources page, won't it, Roland? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So there's the, as we mentioned before, there's the Passion and Purpose Worksheet. Um, there's also a link to uh, the Simon Sinek TED Talk that we talked about before. Yeah. Um, we'd like you to, so as we said, put, put aside some time together, um, make a fist of attempting and answering the, 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 the first questions, and then, then draft a first sentence or paragraph about the purpose of your business, and then we'd love to get it from you. So if you could draft in the next week, take some time, to go through this stuff, and then draft, Put a first draft of a sentence about uh, about the purpose of your business together, and send it to us by email. Yeah, yeah, I love that, Ron. Whenever you have to sit down and you know, write a brochure, write a paragraph, it actually helps you get that clarity because you have to put it down on words, not just think about it. So that's fantastic. Look, I'd also mm -hmm. just like to all uh, remind everyone as well that we really want to help uh, the Wayside Chapel as well. So to take advantage of our Clarity Next Step session, make sure you make that donation to the Wayside Chapel of $100 or more. We'll send you our new perspective business checkup that covers most of those key areas we talked about. And then Roland and I will schedule that clarity and next steps coaching session. Go through all those different areas um, that you go through on your checkup and help draw out some of those simple steps to get you out of overwhelm into fun, but focusing on the most critical areas that we talked about for your business as well. Um, mm. So, um, 
then we turn this, that's the, the, the landing page. Oh, and the other thing that will be on the landing page is another copy of the worksheet for the webinar. So I think that, and that's, there you see, that's the, that's the title of the landing page up there on the screen again. And so I think that's us. Thanks for your time again today and your participation. If you have any other questions, of course, you can email, um, email us at help at newperspectives.com.au. Um, go, go, go and give some money to the Wayside Chapel, and that's goodbye from me. Speak soon. And, and a big thanks to Good Fire for me as well. Thanks for being on our webinar today. I really hope you got some great value out of it. And also, too, that you actually can help the Wayside Chapel and your own business at the same time. And I actually really look forward to talking with you soon. Bye for me as well. Thanks, guys. Bye.